have you ever been building a .NET 6 application and you've done a pull from source control and some numpty on your team has accidentally checked in their local connection details and it's broken your website. Now, aside from being really annoying, a better solution is to refactor your application so you never have to encounter these type of issues. And this is where this video is going to help you. Specifically in this video, you're going to learn all about app settings in .NET Core 6. So we're going to be looking at how to enable everything in program.cs. Now that the startup.cs has gone hasta la vista, baby, we're also going to be looking at different environment settings. So how we can set up environments based on development, staging, production, all that stuff. And the most important thing is we're going to look at how to set up our application so we can have different developer specific settings. So when we do all that source control nonsense, we don't have to worry about people overwriting our local changes. So if this sounds good to you, carry on watching to the end, because it's going to make your life that much easier. If you would like to implement anything that you're about to see in this video, then instead of having to tippy typey stuff off screen, I recommend you download my starter kit, because everything you're about to see is from that kit. In order to access that kit, head over to GitHub, and my handle is John D. Jones, link to below. While you're here, you may as well follow me, be a legend, and just go to repositories and find the repository, which is called John D. Jones.NET 6 Stars Kit. Clone away, and you'll get access to everything instantly. The most important setting that I recommend you change in this video is your YouTube status. And you can do that by smashing on the subscribe button and helping me out with the YouTube algorithm by clicking on like. Now, if you haven't come across my channel before, my name is John and I release a video every Sunday on web development, productivity and general tips that will help you become a better developer. So if that sounds good to you, click subscribe, become a legend. And as a thank you from me to you, I'm going to show you a picture of an aardvark. Hmm. Now we're feeling all motivated by that aardvark goodness. Let's get on and talk about settings. When it comes to adding in specific settings for your application, you're going to need to focus your attention to a file which is called appsettings.json. If you've come from a ASP.NET framework background, this file basically replaces the web.config. Now, as the name implies, if we look in here, you can see that we've got lots and lots of different JSON. So we've got some objects and properties and some values. As you would expect from the .NET framework, we also have a load of utility classes and helpers so we can read these types of settings, which we'll cover later. Now, in order to start reading in these application.json settings, it's not going to happen also magically. What we need to do is within our program.cs file is write some code which defines which files that we'd like to load. Now, historically in .NET Core, .NET 5, we'd have a program.cs and a startup.cs. Now, the big change within .NET 6 is the startup.cs has been deprecated and program.cs is our only settings file nowadays. Now, if we go back to our program.cs, we can see that we've got some configuration here where we're using this extension method, which is called configure app configuration. And we've got this context and a builder and I'm doing all this fancy stuff to read in application variables. And this is the bit that we're going to drill down into a more detail now. The first logical place to start is how do we read in one of these pesky app settings at the code level? And this is what we're going to do within program.cs. Now, on the screen in front of us, you can see an example of my program.cs. And if it looks a bit weird, that's because I've refactored it to a pattern. And the reason why I've done that is to make sure that it doesn't grow unwieldy. One of the challenges if you go from .NET 5 to .NET 6, as we saw in that previous example, is your program.cs can get really big. So I recommend when you're building a website, think about how to structure your program.cs so it scales. Now, I'm not going to cover all the patterns in this video to do that because I've already recorded a video, which is linked to below, all about um, program.cs and startup.cs in .NET 6. So if you're interested in that, review that video. Next, let's have a look at actually how we're going to read one of those settings. Now, in order to read a setting, we're going to have to use the configuration builder. So we can create this new class, call it configuration builder, and off we go. Now, the next command we need to give it, which is an extension method, is add JSON file. And the reason why we do this is because we want to read our app 
settings dot json so this is going to read in that file now the next thing we need to do is add an environment variables so we need to read in what's in that file and then the last thing we need to do is a build so then we need to get that data transfer it into a memory now the next thing we need to do is access one of our settings and for your perusal within our app settings i've created a brand new setting so i've created a object which is called settings and within my settings object i've created this property which is called connection string and the value of it is production connection string we'll keep things simple to start off now going back to our program.cs in order to access this we have a few options so what we want to do is go in here and then we want to do say var settings so we're going to read in all of the values within that setting section and then we can use our config and then get required setting uh, section from here i'm going to read in my settings section so the reason why i'm putting settings in here is that within my app settings i've created this setting section here so you're free to call it whatever you want this might be database details might be application details you go wild call it what makes you happy now going back to program.cs i'm reading in all of my config settings now one of the challenges of just reading our settings in, in json is that it's not very easy to work with at a code level ideally what i want to do is be able to use strongly typed classes to access my config and this is where the get extension method comes in as we can see get it uses generics where we can pass in a type and what we can do with the get method is pass in a class that represents that structure that we've just seen in this example i'm using settings and the reason i'm using this is because in the background i've created this settings class so this settings class just mirrors the output of my application settings.json so settings connection string as a property going back here looking at our model class called settings property called connection string symbols so going back to our program.cs if i put my settings in hopefully we've got the using statement and then now we've got rid of our error and in order to access my connection string now what i can do is just var connection string equals settings dot connection string and then if i put my breakpoint there a breakpoint should be hit and in my connection string hopefully you can see this we've got connection string production connection string so this is how we can actually read in our app settings now this is all great however we've so far hard coded that app settings.json so it's only going to work in one environment what we're going to do now is extend everything so it will work regardless of one production development test whatever um, environment makes you happy the other thing we're going to do is actually look at how we can refactor some of this to make sure that our program.cs doesn't get bigger in order to start reading different application settings for different environments and different developer settings we're going to need to write some additional code now remember in dotnet 6 program cs startup.cs has been merged together this means that program.cs is going to contain all of your applications boot up logic this is why i recommend that you abstract all of the code related to your app settings configuration into its own class and the best most readable way of doing this in my opinion is creating an extension method and i'll show you how i've done it on the screen in front of us on line four you can see i've got this builder host and i've created an extension method which is called configure app settings classic name i think now within my solution explorer i've created a separate folder and i've created a class which is called web application builder name this whatever makes you happy within web application builder all I've done is created this additional method. So in order to make this magic work, create a public static class, call it whatever you want. Then the important bit is to create a public method that's also static. It needs to return a type I host builder. And then in the incoming arguments, 
you need to use the this keyword so it's an extension and then we need to use the ihost builder again and then down the bottom we're going to return it so within this method we're then free to add in a load of configuration now the difference with this example compared to the previous one is that i'm not newing up that configuration builder object instead i'm relying on the application framework to do the hard work for me and you can see this on line nine here where i've got this host and then obviously host is this configure app configuration which was the method we were using in the previous example so i can use this directly from host builder without having to new anything up manually so this is a way better approach and this is the approach i recommend you take now within this method i'm doing exactly the same logic as i did before add json file add environments i don't need to do build in here and in order to access my connection string again within program.cs I've refactored this code slightly and I can get this builder.configuration property. The configuration property is of type configuration manager. This is the reason why we don't need to new it up separately. And then I can get access to my get required section again. And then all of this code is exactly the same. So this small refactoring is going to ensure that your program.cs remains lean. And then you can put all of that code related to setting up app settings into its own class. So next, we're going to look at how we can read in different settings for different environments. Currently, the application will read in a single app settings.config. However, if we want to read in different values for different environments, we'll need to extend this. And the way we can do this is via the environment variable. Now, in .NET Core 6, whatever you want to call it, we have this ASP.NET Core underscore environment. And using this little bad boy, we can add in some separate configuration. So in order to get the environment value, we can do environment dot get environment variable and then asp net core underscore environment. Now you might be wondering, how do I actually test this or how do I change this value? And we can do this via our publish profile. So if I right click on my solution, if I go down to properties, and then if I do a search here for launch profile settings, you'll see that we have this open debug launch profiles UI. Now, clicking on this thing will open up this dialog. And then within here, you can see that I've got this environment variables. And obviously, when you're doing a CI CD pipeline or when you're doing anything which isn't just in Visual Studio yourself, you can pass this in through the command line or that kind of stuff. But for testing, we can just update the value here. So by default, yours will probably say development like this, and it is possible now to change this to production. Now, after I've saved this by closing it, if I fire up my application, my connection string now will say production. Now, the reason for this is because I've extended my app settings a little bit. And now, instead of just having a single app settings.json, I have an app settings.development.json and an app settings.production.json. Mm. And let's have a look in each file. So in app settings.development, you can see that I've mirrored that object. So I've got settings, connection, and it says development. And then in production, I've got the same. So settings, connection string, and now I put production in there. And if I look in the original one, I've just updated the value just so it says developer. And Using this process in program.cs, we can see that when we're using the production flag, we're reading in production. And this is how we can start adding in additional configuration into our application. Exciting stuff, eh? So what we can do back in our web application builder is start adding in different lines to read in different files. So the first line that you want to add in will be your add JSON file as we had originally. However, the things that you need to concentrate on are these two sly little additional parameters here. So the first parameter is saying, is it optional or is it mandatory? So what we want to say is that we always need to have an app settings.json and the build process always needs to read this. Otherwise, we're going to get an error. And then the second one says that reload on change Let's just put true because it's going to make life easier. Now, in order to start reading in those environment specific variables, we can still use the add JSON line. This time we can put in the environment that we want to target. Now, the key to this is the second parameter. And what we can say here is that this is optional. So what this means is that when our application is running, if we have an app settings.json, 
our file will work. If we don't have this, it will fail. And then if we actually have a corresponding app settings.environment.json, read these settings in and overwrite anything which we might have read in the app settings.json. And because these are optional, if we don't have a corresponding app settings with an environment, the application will still run. We're just going to be using the settings from the app settings.json. So let's prove this in action. Let's go back to our solution explorer. Let's delete this file. Let's delete this file. Remember, it should still be set as production. And then when I run this, you can see now that my connection shrink here. So this has got developer now because it's reading it from my app settings. Now, if I went completely bonkers and I sometimes do that and I delete my app settings, and then if I try and run this now, you'll see that I'm going to get a big exception because my app settings don't exist. Because remember, I made this a mandatory field here. So this is kind of the basis of how we can read in environment variables. It's also the basis of how we can start creating developer specific environment variables as well for configuration. So let's have a look at how we can do developer based settings next. We finally got to the good bit. How can we configure our application so your co-workers don't annoy you by checking in their changes accidentally? Now, the process is exactly the same as we've seen before. However, this time, we need to differentiate on something unique to each developer's PC. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use the machine name. So we can access the machine name, going back to our good friend environments, just doing environment.machine name. So if we look at my system information, so in here, just type in system information, you'll find this. You can see that my PC name is desktop 477 units. So all I need to do in this situation is to get my app settings, put my machine name, do a dot JSON, and then within here, we just add in our configuration as you can see this. Now, going back to our web application builder, now I've got my machine name. All we need to do is add in an additional line, which is then going to read in my app settings from my machine name. Remember to keep it optional. So if it doesn't exist, we're not going to get that exception. And yeah, why not? Let's reload on change. And when we start firing up our terminal, when the application starts running, when we look into the program.cs, as you would imagine, we've got our developer related settings here. What can happen now is that every single developer on your team, they can create in their own settings using the machine name. All they need to do is update their own settings and then locally, they're going to get their local connection string and anything else they want to cater. And using this process, you have a very robust system where you can have in environment specific changes and machine level changes. And all we need to do is add in about five or 10 lines of code in here. And the she blows. By this stage of the video, I'm hoping that you understand how we can set up our application settings, the different ways of accessing them, how we can configure our app setting.json so we can read in different values on different environments or different machines. And all in all, we've got a much easier, more robust way of dealing with settings. Huzzah! If you've enjoyed learning all about .NET 6 in this video, then the good news for you is this video is part of a series of how to build a kick-ass website using .NET Core. In the upcoming episodes, expect things like how to hook up a database, how to unit test things, and we'll really go into the nitty gritty of how to configure everything. So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do, how you do it at the beginning of the video. I reckon you should have done it by now, you little scamp if you haven't, but smash on the subscribe button and help me out with the YouTube algorithm. It does take me a long time to record and research these videos, so if you've enjoyed this, please show me some appreciation by clicking like. Otherwise, if you'd like to stay up to date with me, I do a Sunday newsletter, which has some updates and some industry news. The link is below. Otherwise, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in this beautiful world. Until next time, happy coding.